Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna to have our math lesson and it's gonna be on IXL. Our math lesson for IXL, the code is R8C. So if you have your IXL, you can go to the top of your iPad and find the little um, magnifying glass, that means search, and then type in R8C. Make sure it's capitalized. I'm not sure if that affects anything, but it's probably best. Um, so today we're going to be talking about subtracting two two-digit numbers. So two-digit number means that the number has two digits. So like in, we see here, 16 has a one for the tens place and a six for the ones place. So one, two, two digits. And so does the 11. So a one for the tens place and a one for the ones place. So we're subtracting two-digit numbers. Um, so we're gonna start and remember at home, you can always pause the video and give yourself more time or you can um, wait with us if you take as long, if you have the time and you need it as much as the teachers do, okay? So I am right now I'm giving the teachers some think time and working time so that they can solve this problem using an efficient strategy. So remember, an efficient strategy is a strategy that is quick and correct. Right? It needs to be those two things in order to be efficient. So I see Ms. Rosales is ready to go and Ms. T is ready to go. Since in our last video I had Ms. T go first, Ms. Rosales, <laughs> can you go first and show us your strategy? I love the number line. <laughs> yes. So we have been using that one because we want to get better at it, right? And the more we use it, the better we get. So tell us what you did first, Ms. Rosales. Um, so I started off with thinking about the question itself. It says 16 minus 11, so I knew that subtraction meant that my answer is going to be a smaller number. So then I knew that when I bunny hop or skip count on the number line, it's usually towards a larger number. So then I started with my largest number, which is 16, and now I'm going to decrease or get lower in size. And so I decomposed the 11 to 10 and then one more. And so I went from 16, dropped 10 or decreased by 10 and got six and then uh, dropped one or decreased by one and got five. Beautiful. So you started with decomposing that 11 to see how you can easily find your answer. So you knew that 11, if you decompose it, it's 10 and one, and that helps you a lot more get to your answer quickly. So then you did your bunny hop, a big one of 10, right? So minus 10, and that got you to six. But then you knew that you already did the 10, so now you need to do the ones and one little hop. And that was going back. And I love, thank you so much from Mr. Zalas for letting us, reminding us that when we are doing subtraction, we are, our number is gonna be smaller than what it was, right? It's no long, it's not getting bigger. We're not adding anything. We're taking something away. So our number is gonna be smaller. So then minus one, and that takes us to five. And it kind of doesn't give us that option here to put a number under the, tens place. It only gives us the option. So that kind of gives us a hint. If we're adding, we wouldn't get the same answer, right? So Miss T, can you show us your strategy? Well, I was really inspired by Mr. Zales and I was just like, I've never tried the number line strategy, so I wanted to try it. And that made me think, I don't want to just always stick to the same strategy. And that made me want to encourage our students at home that if you're always using the same strategy, you might want to challenge yourself and try something new because you don't know if it's going to be a better strategy or if there's something going to be a faster way to do the work. And so I did try the number line strategy just like Ms. Rosales. And then I also, because then I noticed she already did it, I did another strategy. I did the algorithm right afterwards. So to check my work. And so what I did was I did 16 minus 11, just like IXL told me to set it up. And then I did my ones place first. So six minus one I know is five. And then I wrote five here. And then I know one minus one is zero. So I left it blank. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. 
So you use the algorithm strategy again, right, Ms. T? Mm -hmm. And we, I'm going to put a little scaffold here for everyone at home. Remember that um, this, this digit, it represent, uh, represents a 10, and then the digits on the right represents a 1. I know Ms. T didn't need that scaffold because she has practiced so much. So um, that would be our little scaffold. So then she knew 6 minus 1. She knows that because she's been practicing her math fluency is 5. And then one minus one is zero. And we don't wanna put the zero here because when we leave it blank, we just know it's zero. We usually don't write five, zero, five, right? That's not how we write it. So we it wanna- too long. Yeah, it takes too long and it's not how we see it on the number line. Um, but then I love that Miss T used a strategy to, um, to check her answer. So she used Ms. Rosales' number line strategy to check her answer. And did you decompose like Ms. Rosales as well, Miss T? Yep, just the same. Wow, you guys have the same idea. I read her mind. Um, so everyone at home, um, let's plug it in and see if the teachers got it correctly. Um, okay, I'm going to clear all of our work. And what we got here. So our answer was five. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Okay, let's try another one. So we have... 15 minus 14. So remember, you can pause your video if you need some more think time or work time. My teachers are going to be giving me a thumbs up when they are ready to go. And this time I'll have Miss T go first and then Miss Rosales. If Ms. Rosales is ready. Give I'm him. ready too. Oh, nice. Ms. T is ready too. So remember, this is subtracting. And like Ms. Rosales told us, when we subtract, we're taking things away. And we see this symbol right here, the little dash, it's a subtraction sign. That tells us that we're decreasing our number. All right, Ms. T, what strategy did you use today? So my strategy, I kind of did it in my head because I looked at the numbers and I was like, oh, 15 minus 14, that's just the number before. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, oh, it must be just one. So I'm trying to show my thinking because I did do it in my head. So I drew a picture of myself thinking in my head <laughs> that 15 mm -hmm. Then if you count backwards, 14, it's just one before. So the answer must be just one. Oh, that's such a great strategy. It's kind of like the counting on strategy, but instead you're showing what you're thinking, mm -hmm. right? And I'm counting backwards instead of forwards. Yeah, you're counting back. It's just like the counting on strategy, except we're counting back. Just like Mr. Rosales was giving me that hint, huh, Mr. Rosales? So. <laughs> 14 and then 15. I did 15 then 14. First. Oh, oh, okay. Why did you do um, 15 first? Were you counting back? Yeah, because I was trying to think, oh, I started with 15 and then how did I get, and I took away 14. It's just one space before. Oh, I see. Well, Mr. Kimowich, I heard you start, I saw you initially put 14 and then 15, which also works so if you feel more comfortable counting on mm -hmm. you could start with 14 in your head and count up to 15. oh that's a great that's a great point so 15, or you, know. you can start with 14 and know like 14 if i add one more and using some of our addition i addition um facts if we add one more then that means that if we subtracted both of it it would just be one that we have left over and then it made me think that what I'm really doing isn't really 15 minus 14. I'm actually doing 15 minus one equals 14. So that's like our subtraction math number fact or fact family, because in subtraction, the fact family looks a little bit different. Right, so 15 minus one equals 14. So it's the same thing as 15 minus 14 equals one. So we have that fact family. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, thank you so much, Ms. T. And Ms. Rosales, can you share your strategy with us? So I did um, 
horizontal 15 minus 14. And whenever you're doing uh, place values and drawing the tens and the ones on a subtraction, you don't have two sets that you're showing. You're just showing that first set 15. So I have a 10 and five ones. And then I change the color so it's more um, clear. I'm taking away 14, so I'm crossing that 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and I gave you what was left, which is one. Beautiful, and I like how you used a different way to show those tens and ones. So you drew out them out without using the chart, you just drew them quickly, um, because sometimes that can take some time. So you did your 10 um, rod, and then your 15, one, two, three, two, three, four, Five. And Mr. Kimmelich, it's minus. Just. Oh, yes. Thank you. Oh, no. It's okay. We're all <laughs> we're reflecting. There we go. So 15 minus. Thank you, Ms. T, for helping me with that. Um, equals. Okay. And then we subtracted, just like Ms. T did in the previous um, example she subtracted the ones first correct miss rosales so uh, did you no i actually just did it as it is the tens and the ones so it's oh, one. okay so you went 10 11 12 13 14. Mm -hmm. yeah but just know that i know that it's okay for me to do this mm -hmm. when it's not regrouping Right, so we're not regrouping right now. Um, and But usually when we're subtracting, we wanna start with that ones. So looking at the ones and then subtracting the ones and then going to the tens and subtracting yeah. them. So I, I, it, you should class, you should start with your ones and then take off your tens. That was my, that's something you should remember to do anyway. Mm -hmm. So we both got the answer one. So let's see if we are correct. Are we ready? We're going to clear our work and put in the answer. Our answer was one. <gasps> Yay! Yeah. Look at the mathematicians. So everyone at home, remember to use the IXL code R8C for today's lesson. We'll also be posting a math fluency on Seesaw. And make sure that you're using an efficient strategy. That, that means efficient for you. So it might look different from everyone, as you can see. Efficiency for everyone is different. So what is, it, what is the most um, quick and correct way you can get the answer? So thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions, you know that you can put it in the comment box below, or you can message one of us, uh, one of your teachers. Um, have a great day. Bye.